Melbourne, Australia, and we've been growing our own food on our balcony for over two years now. Our goals with gardening have always been to try and be more self-sustainable and also challenge ourselves to see how much we can grow in a small space. We started getting more intrigued by the idea of having our own little urban garden in the city and we did more research to learn about varieties that we could grow on our balcony. And as time went on, I started getting a really amazing sense of satisfaction being able to harvest some of these vegetables and use them in our own cooking. We live in an inner city apartment and we have a balcony that is about 8 square meters. So everything that we've grown on our balcony has been mostly an experiment because of how different the microclimate on our balcony is compared to your regular suburban backyard. Melbourne has a temperate climate, but our microclimate on our balcony tends to be a little warmer because we're on the top level of our apartment building. So it means we're more exposed to the elements with the wind, the sun and the rain. It can get quite windy on the balcony, so we have to be diligent with staking and trellising of our plants. We also can't have space saving hanging baskets because they present a danger with the windy conditions. But on the other hand, when it rains, it helps us because we don't have to water our plants as often. Our balcony is surrounded by glass balustrade and tiles, which can heat up quite a bit in the sun. It makes it easier to grow certain types of plants like tomatoes and peppers. And usually these are summer crops, but we can get harvest even into early autumn. We try to grow as much food as we can. Uh, the amount of food that we harvest can vary depending on the time of year, how much planning we've done and the weather conditions. And sometimes in winter we can go weeks without having to buy leafy greens from the grocers because of the production from the balcony. When we first started gardening in particular, we wanted to grow all of the cool varieties there were, different shapes of cucumbers, different colours of vegetables. But as time has gone on, we've realised that the best way to garden successfully at home and to minimise the food waste that we have is to actually grow plants um, and vegetables that we are actually going to use in our kitchen. So I do also grow vegetables that have sentimental value to me. In particular, I grow a lot of bok choy and it reminds me of my mom serving up stir-fried bok choy for dinner every night when I was still living in Singapore as a child. Our dog Barney absolutely loves harvest time on the balcony because he knows that he's going to get to enjoy some fresh homegrown vegetables and fruits. Barney's favourite veggies to snack on from the balcony are snow peas, carrots, mulberries, blueberries and strawberries. So we make sure to grow these every year to make sure that he always has something yummy to snack on. To ensure that we have ongoing successive harvests, we sow a new batch of seeds every few weeks so that we're not waiting too long for the next batch of vegetables to mature. So ultimately when we are waiting for our next batch of vegetables to be ready for harvest, we still have to head back to the grocery store and buy food like everyone else in the city. And there are of course limits to how much we can actually grow on a balcony in such a small space, but overall it has reduced the amount of food and greens that we have to buy. And it's a really satisfying feeling to have, to know that you can actually grow some of your own food on your own. In terms of containers, we mostly use grow bags and plastic pots because they've worked better for our budget. Although we do have a stacker planter which we can grow a number of different plants in and it's quite space efficient. Our plastic containers are mostly self-watering so they've got a small reservoir at the bottom so they're quite good for plants that have higher water needs. But if we're growing plants that are a little bit more drought resistant we might use them in the grow bags because they do tend to dry out a little bit quicker. We water each and every one of our containers by hand with a watering can and even though it can be a little bit more tedious, I find that having to water our plants by hand actually encourages us to inspect our plants more frequently and more closely 
to get on top of any pest situations there are. So we still do get problems with aphids, spider mites and caterpillars even up on our balcony. And unfortunately when you grow vegetables organically, these pests are just part of the ecosystem. So by inspecting our plants more regularly, we are able to get on top of any of these situations before they spread to any of our other containers and vegetables. Um, our usual expenses come from maybe a bag or two of compost at the start of each growing season and just on seeds for new varieties of vegetables that we want to try and grow. By growing most of our plants and vegetables from seed rather than buying seedlings from the nursery, that has allowed us to keep our gardening costs as low as possible as well. It's been more of a gradual journey about slowly acquiring and buying what we need for our garden. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it was overly expensive to get this started. All in all, I think that our gardening journey has been worth every single dollar and cent that we've put into it and it's a hobby that continues to give back to us. We've always been quite interested in how we can reduce our own waste and one of the ways that we address this is by having a vermi composting system in our storage cage. So the storage cage is in the basement of our building which means it's quite ideal conditions for our worm farm because worms don't like the heat. And we can put a whole bunch of different things in there such as kitchen scraps, eggshells, coffee grounds, tea bags and since we've started grooming our dog Barney we can actually put his protein rich fur in there. So the worms then break down all that waste that we put in there and turn it into worm castings which is very nutrient rich and we can use that as fertilizer on our balcony. And that helps reduce the amount of waste that we put into landfill. One of the main advantages of having a balcony garden is accessibility. So we don't need to go buy a bunch of veggies if they're already growing on the balcony and they're ready to harvest or even if we're between harvests, we can still get some fresh herbs from the balcony. Balcony gardening does have its challenges and one of the biggest issues I think is the lack of guidance that's available out there. So we've learned most of our gardening knowledge from trial and error and of course from numerous failures. So to help other balcony gardeners or container gardeners get some inspiration or some idea about what might work in their space, we share our balcony gardening journey on Instagram and TikTok and hopefully YouTube soon. Every balcony has its own microclimate and different growing conditions depending on the material that the balcony is constructed with, um, which level you're on, and which direction you face, the amount of sunlight and wind you get. So you really only learn about what works best in your space with practical experience. Because we have also grown cucumbers indoors before, I don't necessarily think that you even need to have an outdoor area to be able to grow some of your own food. And ultimately, I don't think that the productivity of your garden is measured only by the amount of food that it produces. I think that the amount of hope, satisfaction and joy that you get from growing and harvesting your own food is also a big part of the productivity of your garden. As time has gone on, I've realised that there are other benefits to gardening beyond the vegetables that we can grow ourselves and harvest to use in our cooking. After a long day of work, I really enjoy coming back home to our balcony garden and just being able to relax there, free from expectations and deadlines that I might have at work. So I think it's really one of the best things I've done for my mental health. subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow Kevin and Changi on Instagram at 10th Floor Balcony Garden. Thanks for watching.